Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about Path of Exile 2 and why I think it's going to be absolutely awesome. We're not going to talk just about ExileCon points. I want to make this into more of a meta discussion and everything the devs have given us, the reasoning that they gave us for certain things that they did. Also, I talked to a lot of people now that actually attended ExileCon and played these betas, and I'm not just talking about streamers. One thing I want to address real quickly here is my latest video, which was called I'm Worried About Path of Exile 2. I corrected this. This was my bad. If you watch the video... I think, you know, it's a pretty reasonable take, right? It's like Pav Exile 1 might go away eventually, the splitting of the community, stuff like that. But it wasn't really addressed towards PUE 2. So my title was just kind of dumb. I think a lot of people looked at my title, didn't watch the video and just thought immediately, ooh, I'm a Pav Exile 2 hater nowadays. I tried to gatekeep, but that is not the case at all. I put this out after day one of ExileCon, where they talked about Pav Exile 1 specifically as well. Whereas... Obviously, I'm going to watch the whole ExileCon until I can really comment on Path of Exile 2. And that's what this video is now going to be. So yeah, my bad. But also, I was really not happy how some people who have really doomer takes about Path of Exile right now took this video and weaponized it, basically saying Path of Exile is over. If you're one of these people and you really don't like Path of Exile 2 and how it looks like, I think this video can provide you with enough copium to at least get to the Path of Exile 2 beta and then you can see for yourself. The first point is that there is going to be a fresh start for the devs. A lot of people are talking about new players. They're not going to have as much of an intimidating first few hours of the game. And that's all fine. We're going to talk about that. But think about how much better the quality of the content releases are going to be. Think about how rough it has to be to make new leaks for Power of Exile, where there's so much stuff in there that they did 10 years ago. They can't really revisit because everything's so interwoven, right? And if they change one thing, stuff from 2021 is going to be... You know what I mean? Like this just like pile of content, right? That has accumulated over time, every single leak, right? And it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And now we're here at like 2023. And they are supposed to balance this absolute heap of crap, right? And make new leaks for it on top of it. I'm sure over the leaks, they have made a lot of decisions that they're not happy with because it completely stifles a lot of the new releases. And going back to them just makes everything more complicated. And being able to just have a completely clean slate and pick and choose what you want out of this pile and make it into an absolute like unit of a game is, I think, only upside. And sure, you could argue, is the implementation going to be good? But that's something where, well, we don't know. But having played this game for 10 years, I give them the benefit of the doubt. Balance-wise, nothing that they showed us really matters because... From four years ago to now, everything changed. And until PoE 2 is going to come out, it's going to be at least one and a half-ish years, right? So we just can't say. Think about how much they learned over the years and how much better quality content they can give us if they actually have something that doesn't have a million variables to just check every single time. I'm so taken aback how they have a game that's decently balanced. Obviously, there's always going to be OP stuff. But just the fact that the game works and the game makes sense is incredible as well as that Pav of exile was really basic when it started out very slow methodical right and over time it got more and more zoomy as the power creep came in it doesn't have to mean that's going to happen with poe2 as well we don't know maybe they're going to combat it more but i wouldn't just say that even if the game will be slow on release that does not mean anything over time if that is one of your concerns now number two is it's a fresh start for new players I remember three years ago, I wasn't a content creator back then. A buddy of mine asked me if I want to play WoW with him because he noticed that I'm playing PoE for like three weeks or something. You want to do something else? You want to have a second main game? And at the time, I didn't really know much about WoW. I obviously saw the occasional Asmongold video that got recommended to me. But in general, I didn't really know. I tried to get into it and I was like, you know what? No, there is no way I want to learn all of this shit. And at that point, it kind of dawned on me that if WoW was too much for me, PUE is probably even worse because PUE actually keeps a lot more of the things that they introduce over time. I think at that point, I got a lot more empathetic towards new players. And I'm sure it's also one of the reasons why I then started to make content at some point. And I want to remind people that are saying, well, you could just reset it at every point, right? There's always going to be new player. It's always going to be a problem. While that's a fine point. Whenever PUE started out, nobody was looking at it. Nobody was interested. The brand Path of Exile didn't have any weight. Nowadays, you have the whole PUE community. You have the Diablo community. You have other ARPGs and even MMO communities 
looking at PoE2 and seeing if they might like it and they're going to probably try it out, which means a lot more fresh starts for a lot more people. And if you're somebody who's like kind of gatekeepy about the game, right, you're kind of like, well, if they can't get through the first hours of the game, they're not meant to like the game, then fine. But what you have to understand is the more people you have in the game, the more worth is you being good at it. Because you will be able to get a lot of your knowledge from PoE1 onto PoE2. There is quite a few things to overlap there. And there's a difference between being good at a game that has 500 players and a game that has a million players. And you will realize that if you've ever played a game that has been going dead over time, the community and how big it is plays such a huge factor for a ton of people, especially the people more involved. And another thing is it's just really hard to research stuff in Path of Exile right now. It has been too long. There should be a reset. I do agree with that. I, the other day, actually tried to look something up for like deep delving. I'm not really that good at deep delving. So I was like, let's search YouTube and Reddit and the forums. And the best things I found were from like maybe three years ago or something. And that's because everybody is always super stoked whenever the leak comes out. There's a hundred videos about it in depth. It's awesome. But then if you have to do it later over the years and the leak mechanics get implemented into the game in a different state, then it's really hard to get information. Number three is something that a lot of people see as a downside. I did as well whenever I first heard about it. But after day two and looking a lot more into it, I would, by the way, recommend watching day two of ExileCon. I think it was infinitely better than day one in terms of presentation. After thinking about it more, the reason I think it's good is because crafting is just ridiculous. There's this meme where people open the passive tree and they're intimidated, but the passive tree is infinitely easier to figure out than what the hell is going on with this crafting system that just has layers upon layers from over 10 years. I love crafting, but when I think about making a crafting guide for new players, I don't even know where to start. And trust me, I did try. It's just so much and it's so convoluted. And you could argue that a system that's that big, that has to do with itemization, that is literally one of the cornerstones of every RPG, if 99% of people can't engage with it, and that is currently kind of the case, right? Then it's just useless, right? You can't just like chaos spam an item. You're just better off buying one. I don't think you can have two things at the same time, and that is meaningful loot and making it so you can craft a normal item to perfect. I think one of these things kind of have to go. And after playing Last Epoch, I gotta say that I do agree that Meaningful Loot should probably have to do with picking up items and then refining it with crafting because that's what Last Epoch does. It's pretty hype to find certain items that are, for example, two or three mods and then you finish them instead of having a normal item, prepping them, thinking about everything and then buying like infinite mats. Man, crafting is a fun gamble, but buying materials is so absolutely ridiculous, right? So instead of having to spam like the same thing 2000 times, making it easier and making every click more meaningful, I just, I do only see upside. That being said, there's definitely a beauty to Path of Exile, to this whole chaos and making the perfect item, making like a mirrorable item. And I hope that is still there somehow. But from personal feedback that I've gotten over the years from new players, they just cannot use the system currently. So if they make it that this is a system that some people are really good at, but some people at least can use it, that I think is a lot better. Now, controversial one is the speed of the game. I personally love that Path of Exile is very fast paced. I love that I can get there in endgame. But one thing, the more I thought about it is if they can make it to where you can still be fast, but it's a lot harder, or maybe not as fast, but still fast relative to the game, that actually would make it a lot more meaningful to min-max your character. Now, let me give you an example of what I mean here by um, just playing a map with my Mana Forge Arrows build, right? Mana Forge Arrows is a really fun build. It feels fun to play. It is quite fast, but I'm under no Ill illusion that like a lot of people can do this, right? Like this is something where a lot of people can get to with enough currency investment. And in fact, when I made this build i was like okay i need a speedy character i have like five or six things that i would want to do and then there's like flicker strike which i don't really like to play and there's it's not really that special right sure it's special when you play it and when to when you get to the currency but build wise the min maxing it wasn't like that hard but think about this build in regards to like a diablo 4 build or something right where New players are very slow, and then you can get faster and faster, but Diablo 4 kind of stops at some point because it says 
We don't want you to get over 200% movement speed. On day two, they did say they don't want to completely eliminate speed. It's just going to be harder to get there and it's not going to be as ridiculous. But still, if the baseline is slower, you don't have to get all up there to be like better than other builds. And putting in the work and putting in the time to min-max your character might in fact be a lot more meaningful. So they're basically just trying to set a new baseline. And on top of that, we also just, we don't know, right? What's going to happen. They could literally adjust it until next year and it's going to be faster but also on top of that power creep right will set in over time path exile was really slow at the start now it's an absolute mess right i'm sure there is a, a way you can find to kind of balance that out will be a lot of patches with new items which with new powerful interactions and we just can't say how this game is going to evolve over the next few years number five gold when i initially saw gold i was a little bit alarmed and that's simply because I absolutely love how Path of Exile did their currency. Instead of just saying, oh, we have gold and that's like a catch-all, they said, no, our currencies are going to involve crafting. We're going to intertwine those two. And at the same time, the community decides, depending on what they want to craft and how they want to craft, which of these are going to be the main currency. The main currency used to be GCPs, believe it or not. Then it was Chaos Orbs and Exalted Orbs, and now it's Chaos Orbs and Divine Orbs, with a little bit of Awakened Sextants creeping in there, right? So why is maybe gold a fine thing though? Because it's actually not replacing these. You could see it like as Parandas coins, sorta. It is not even ingrained in the menu or something. It actually has stacks like other currencies. So what it seems to be is just like an early game currency to get you through the acts and have better progression. Fact of the matter is loot on the ground sucks and vendoring bad items sucks as well. We talked about meaningful loot earlier and there's one equation where you want to find good items on the ground. Otherwise, there's no reason to pick them up. But there's also the other side, which is how fun or how annoying is it actually to sell all the other items that you had to pick up that just were nothing. It's a big thing for me because I want to get into the next map and not do this over and over again, right? And... If you look at these, that's not actually exciting. The currencies I get here are an absolute joke. I have to know how to craft. And also, let's be real, other than maybe the Orb of Alchemy, it's not going to make my leveling process faster or more efficient at all. If they do gold, right? This could just be, for example, 4,100 something gold, right? And then you go to the vendor and you gamble with it. And if you implement it correctly, I think that's a straight up upgrade. Plus it could be a fun gamble, right? Theoretically, it's not that much different than other gambles. You could say, as long as rares will be meaningful. Let's say you sell five random items and you get a stack deck and then you can open the stack deck. That could be a similar situation here if they balance it correctly. Oh my God, number six, the new skill system. This was one of the biggest pain points for me, which will probably now not be implemented into POE1. It is the new skill system, which makes it so item sockets are not on items anymore. They are still linked to items, but they are now separate in the menu, which means that, for example, if you remove this bow and you get an upgrade, you don't have to redo your sockets at all. You don't have to look at that. And when I think about leak starting, that is the biggest, by far biggest pain point having to manage that while leveling. Also, the complexity that comes with having so many six links, depending on how the new support gems are going to look like, it is going to be just a blast to figure out as well. The old system was just too clunky. You find an upgrade if it doesn't have the sockets you want. If you didn't find that jeweler orb, if you don't find any fusings, it is really annoying. I don't think this is a contentious point at all, so I'll put it here at the end, but it still had to be mentioned. And I really hope it gets into PE1, but I just can't see how. Another point that I really like is, you know these bosses, you might not even know this because they're not really that interesting, right? I love heads there. There's going to be bosses like this in every single zone in a total of... Right now, they said 100. But it's probably going to be more whenever it comes out. These are now going to be interesting to find in whatever zone you have. They now give you permanent stats. So they showed it. It's sort of like getting a passive skill book, but you get like certain stats. For example, 10 fire rays or a plus 10 spirit. Mentioning spirit, actually. Spirit is great. Mana right now is an absolute meme. You're just getting leech or you're getting like enough region to where it doesn't matter and you just reserve the rest it's an absolute joke so them trying to make mana more meaningful i appreciate it i hope they can i think that the mana flask will actually have to completely go because i think it just invalidates everything maybe they can just tone it down a little bit but i don't know how these two things really go well with each other but if they figure it out i think spirit is a great idea next one is so goddamn hype you can actually adjust 
what weapon, your main or your offhand weapon, you use for certain skills, as well as you can do certain passive points. So, for example, let's say you get like 20 passive points over the course of the campaign throughout like, I don't know, like these books. You can allocate those, not all your points, but those into separate categories depending on your offhand or your main hand. The way to explain this is, for example, you have a skill A for clear speed. So let's say you have like AOE on it. You have certain stats that make you faster, but not necessarily more damage, right? And you use that while you're clearing monsters. And then on your offhand that is being used automatically, you assign to a different skill. That different skill doesn't have as good AOE clear, but it has really good single target. Barrage Lightning Arrow would be a good example, right? And you use that for single target. And not only that, but you can also adjust the points on your passive tree. So on your main setup, you will take all the AOE nodes that you can, or like projectile speed or whatever you want. And on your single target setup, you, you just have raw damage. That's something I'm really looking forward to. Another thing that I'm a little bit dodgy about is maybe the dodge roll, but if they implement it correctly, if they make it scale with movement speed, which I think they actually said, and they also said there's going to be support on the passive tree on items, I think overall this can be a good thing. They also talked about this having iframes. I think it's called selective iframes, meaning you will always dodge when you roll, always dodge projectiles and strike skills, but you don't automatically dodge AoEs because that would be pretty OP. And at the end here, I also want to say that I think it's good that mechanical skill is being rewarded more. Obviously, if you're watching racers like Ben or I'm Exile, you know that mechanical skill does matter whenever you fight these uber bosses on hardcore, but on softcore, not really. You can outscale basically everything. And I'm a really good example of that. I will actually try to get my game up again because I think I'm way too much in my head about like builds and stuff, but I don't really think about enemy types and their resistances, what they do, their mechanics. Over the years, I think I've gotten really bad at mechanical games. So PoE kind of screwed me in that regard, but I'll try to get back. And I think this is a really cool thing in general. So I hope this video could give you a little bit of an insight of how I think about Path of Exile 2, maybe approach some of the things you might be a little bit doomer-ish about in a more positive light. But yeah, if you're on the fence about PoE 2, especially if you're a PoE 1 main, which I know a lot of my subs are obviously, I hope this could maybe give you a little bit more of a positive insight. Obviously, we shouldn't see everything positive out of critique comes a lot of good feedback and everything I talked about here is something that we should be talking about that's good to get out everybody gets their thoughts out and GG is reading those things as well and getting opinionated by whatever the community says but we should just wait as well for the beta and just see for ourselves overall the reason I'm hyped for now is simply because of GGG looking at especially at their day two Exocon which if you haven't seen yet I, I would highly recommend it the passion that they have for the game the like they just looked so happy of being able to start from new to be able to implement way more of what they learned over the years it has really gotten to me plus obviously the trust that i have in them over the years i will give them the benefit of the doubt when it comes to poe1 i'm a little bit more on the doomer side but when it comes to poe2 i'm definitely positive and with that being said since i still don't have a slogan see you next time